Hey everybody, Eddie J on crypto. I hope you're having a great day. So a few of my friends wanted to learn a little bit more about NFTs and what they really are, like what's all the buzz, right? So basically an NFT is a digital asset that can hold different kinds of information, right? Um, that information can be a JPEG, you know, an image file, a music file, a book, um, those are the simple things that it can do. That digital asset can al also represent something in the real world, such as it can be your membership card to a restaurant or a social club. It can represent um, security access to, you know, another online site. But there are a lot of uses for NFTs. You can purchase NFTs in a number of different places. You can purchase it on OpenSea, which happens to be a $13 billion or valued at a $13 billion organization where you can purchase just any kind of, you know, not random, but not curated um, NFTs. There are other platforms that actually curate the NFTs and they approach it sort of like, you know, an art show. You got to be good enough to get on. OpenSea is kind of open. That's what they mean by OpenSea. And they grew and they grew fast. Now, there are a lot of things that are dangerous about NFTs. Um, let's go over some of that technical stuff. Let me just take a look at my notes here because I want to say it properly. So NFTs obviously exist on the blockchain. They understand or the information that's captured is who put it on the blockchain, meaning who minted it, who's paid for it, who sold it, who bought it, things like that. Tracking over time is what happens on the blockchain. It's very similar to a crypto. A particular coin can be tracked. But that NFT itself, when you get it, might have additional information stored on it, right? Such as, like I said, access to, you know, a place, um, online access to a, to a special website, whatever it is. But those NFTs have uses. Over the course of time, NFTs have, some of them have been fake. Some of them have been real. Um, some of them obviously, uh, are rug pulls. Some of the projects that are out there have been rug pulls. And a rug pull, again, is something where someone creates something, builds up the money in it, the value of it, and because they hold the most, they yank the value or the money out of it and run away with it. Now, a couple of videos that I've done in the past have noted, you know, some of the people that have been, uh, brought to justice or on trial for, you know, alleged rug pulls. I did a video earlier today and I mentioned another possible rug pull. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you're looking at NFTs, be sure of where that NFT is coming from. You might want to look at the history of that NFT, who's bought it, who sold it. So when I first got in, got involved in NFTs, I wanted to create an NFT to see what it would mean, what it means to to mint one on the different platforms and all that stuff. And I noticed, you know, in doing my research, well, this NFT was bought and sold. That's really cool. It's bought and sold, but it was it was bought and then so it was minted, bought, sold, right? And the person minted it. Somebody bought that mint for like a decent number, but it seemed like a false kind of trail for that NFT. And that is where some of the nefariousness happens. So you kind of want to pay attention to who's doing what and how they're doing it. There are different places to purchase NFTs. I gave you one, OpenSea. You also have Rarible. You have the NBA's Top Shot. And a lot of these different places um, have their own way of handling and managing NFTs. And something else that sets them apart in some cases is 
the kind of blockchain that it's on. So for a long time, OpenSea only dealt with Ethereum-based um, NFTs. Then came along with Solana. And the Solana, I think there's also Matic, which is Polygon. And the different blockchains that are out there enable you to do different mint different NFTs. They come with different fees for that minting, all that stuff. In the case of NBA Top Shop, for instance, their differentiator, remember I, I just mentioned about curating, you know, NFTs, they're curating the art that's, that's on there because that's really what some of these NFTs are. But NFT Top Shot is a very specific marketplace in that that is the only place where you can buy those cards or those NFTs. You can only buy them there. You can only sell them there. No place else. Kind of an exclusive space, right? By OpenSea adding Solana to its, to its integration, they open themselves up to e an even larger market of NFTs. Over time, there have been a whole bunch of fake NFTs, rug pulls, all that kind of stuff, security breaches, hacks, theft, whole bunch of stuff. At one point, there was an article, I think, was it by the Times? I forget now, but I actually mentioned it a few, a few videos ago, like a few videos ago. Um, but they were mentioned, they were saying like 80% of the NFTs on OpenSea were fake. 80%. That's a big number. I think that number has gone down, right? Um, as you see, more and more real NFTs come onto the market and all that good stuff. Something to pay attention to is who's behind the project. Earlier today on a different video, I mentioned that um, I want to get his name right. Is it Cordell? It's Shams Medici and Snoop Dogg. It's not Shams Medici is Snoop Dogg's son. Um, I think it's Cordell Broadus is his son's name. He actually created the idea for Snoop Dogg and they decided to do it together. They're doing something on the Cardano platform. Awesome. But that's something where you can verify that that's a real NFT. It's not a celebrity lending their name to an NFT project. It's the celebrity doing an, NF an NFT project. As you look at the places where you can purchase NFTs, you want to understand, you know, where's the NFT actually stored? Are you going to store it on your wallet or are you going to keep it on the marketplace? All that good stuff. Just a few days ago, there was somebody who sold a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT for 115 bucks. Yeah, that was a mistake. It was a big mistake. Um, I think it was 115 bucks. Suffice it to say, it was significantly less than what it was supposed to be. And you can make mistakes like that when working with NFTs. So the platform that you choose, the blockchain you want to mint it on, are factors that go into which marketplace you want to buy, sell, or mint, meaning mint, meaning create NFTs. NFTs can be really cool. They can be really fun. They can be really useful. My company, one of my companies, BC and Sports, is about to do a major project in NFTs. It's going to be fun, but it took us some time to understand what blockchain we wanted to mint it on, how we're going to mint them, how often we're going to mint the exclusivity, the exclusivity of the minting, the information that we want to share, the additional access, because what we want to do is bridge digital to real life. So what additional access does, does that NFT give to the person holding the NFT? With that comes all kinds of copyright issues with regard to NFTs. So Board Ape Yacht Club or uh, was it Yuga Labs? I forgot the name of the name of the company, but Board Ape Yacht Club or the company that owns them 
purchased assets from another company. The other company doesn't give commercial rights to the holders of those assets. Well, Board Ape Yacht Club does, so you can actually use your digital asset commercially, meaning if somebody comes to you and says, oh, I really think that's crazy cool, I'd like to make t-shirts out of them, and you can collect royalties on it and not have to pay Board Ape Yacht Club commercial rights. So you want to understand when you purchase an NFT, what are the rights that come with that NFT, and what are the rights that do not come with that NFT? I know it's a lot to take in, and this little video is just scratching the surface on what NFTs are and what they can do. And it's definitely only scratching the surface on how to purchase an NFT, how to mint an NFT. You're choosing a platform upon which you're going to make your purchases, mint, and all that other stuff. You might find that I, want, I need to have different marketplaces that I'm involved in depending on what I'm doing with that particular thing. It's sort of like when I spoke about wallets in the other lesson that I gave. It really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If I know I'm trading in Ethereum NFTs, there are a couple of marketplaces that I'm going to want to be involved in. If I want to do Solana or I want to do Matic, there are other marketplaces that I want to be involved in. If I am dealing with exclusivity and dealing with the NBA, then Top Shot is the only place that I can play with that. Question is, with all of those marketplaces that are out there, are you also allowed to hold your own NFT in your own non-custodial wallet? So an NFT marketplace can equate to a centralized exchange where they are holding it for you in a space dedicated to you. That's nice. I like to hold on to my own stuff. Like I ride motorcycles. I'm not going to park my motorcycle in my neighbor's garage. I'm going to put my motorcycle in my garage. I'm not going to have to go to my neighbor's house on during their rules. Like when I can knock on the door, ring the doorbell, when I can go get my motorcycle. There are different advantages. Maybe where I'm storing my motorcycle is a place where, you know, I get additional services. Like if I wanted to trade my motorcycle, maybe I want to trade a motorcycle with somebody else that has a motorcycle I want to ride and they want to ride mine. So we trade for the day or I want to sell it. Hence, look at the marketplaces. It's the same thing. The blockchain that I'm on, the kind of digital asset that I'm looking for the safety of that marketplace, the security of that marketplace, right? Because you wouldn't want to be, on, be involved with a marketplace that's been hacked all the time and all that stuff. You want to see a, a marketplace that, yes, we've been hacked, but we've done this, 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 and this to prevent other breaches or limit you know, other breaches, things like that. And everybody's been hit, okay? It's, it's, just, it's just like getting a virus on your computer. Everybody's had a virus. Whether you believe it or not, everybody's had a freaking virus. Everybody's had something on their computer that shouldn't have been there. So they had to remove it. It happens. So as you look at NFTs, it is a great, exciting place where you actually can purchase things of value, sell things of value. But just like with anything else, you want to be careful of where you're doing business and who you're doing business with. So I hope this helps. If you like it, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and definitely hit the notification bell so that you can actually find out when I'm dropping the next video. Like today, this is video number two. Anyway, hope you have a great night. Thank you for listening. If you have questions, drop a note down in the comments section, and I'll try to get back to everybody. Have a great day.